I have decided to release all my CAD files of the gun parts I have designed. These are all designed to be 3D printed. I will link to my Grab CAD models page in the description. Some designs require hardware and I have added Amazon links in the description of this video as well as in the description of the parts on Grab CAD. I am not trying to make any money off these designs nor do I want anyone else to sell my designs or make money from them. They are for personal use only. Put them on your own guns, give them to your friends. Of course, I cannot control if anyone were to sell these, but I can stop publishing the designs and take the files down, which I don't want to do. I want them to be available to anyone watching my videos and anyone searching for this sort of thing on GrabCAD. I get lots of requests in the comments of my videos where I showcase the parts that I have designed uh, to purchase them or have access to the CAD files. I think it's cool that people are interested in what I have made for my own firearm, so I want to share with a community of people who watch my videos, like all 30 of you. Uh, I give more details on these designs in previous videos about the firearms they are featured on. So if you have any questions about individual um, parts or components, uh, check my video history first. I will add pertinent information regarding the individual designs on the GrabCAD pages. All the parts are step files and I oriented them in the way they should be put on the build plate. Every slicing software I have used takes step files, so I think that's the best way to share them. I will also make recommendations of infill, type, and density, as well as layer height and other parameters like support structure. Of course, if they need other hardware, that will be noted. I have printed all of these out of PETG or PLA. Both work fine, but I prefer PETG as it is a little bit tougher. I did use PLA on the ones I color matched to my gray and FDE polymer 80 frames, and they're holding up surprisingly well. I'm going to go through the models one by one, spin them around in CAD, and show one that is actually printed or installed on the gun if possible. I will talk about some of the design intent and features of each as well. If you see anything you like, you know where to get it. You can also skip the rest of this video and just go browse my GrabCAD page if you want. I have designed four different magwells for the full size and compact size polymer 80 frames. I cannot guarantee fit as there are different versions of the frame. I have also verified fitment on a Grey Ghost Precision frame as well. They seem to be the same as the Polymer 80 frames. These designs were based on P80 frames labeled V2. I had to design magwells for the compact and full size frames separately because the bottom of those frames is different between the two sizes. The full size, Glock 17 size, magwells are labeled as PF940 on GrabCAD, and the compact or Glock 19 size are labeled as PF940C, which is the name that Polymer 80 gives their frames. All these magwells attach in the same way, an M5 by 0.8 uh, heat set threaded insert is inserted into the hole at the back of the magwell. Then a button head screw goes through the hole in the grip to secure the magwell in the back. The magwell has a lip in the front that secures over the bump in the front of the grip. The heat set inserts require a soldering iron with a tip attachment. Um, size for the whole of the insert. All this is available on Amazon. Links, of course, are in the description down below, and pertinent links are on the GrabCAD pages as well. The idea behind this magwell that I am calling the carry magwell is a low-profile magwell that helps with reloads while being minimal and allowing magazines to be stripped with the relief cuts on the sides. This one has an angled back that is designed for concealed carry, as that is where the firearm will usually print. All these magwells have bumps on the sides that help fill in the bottom part of your palm. It's like a little mini palm swell. I added this feature because it felt good in my hand and add a little bit of stiffness and rigidity to the side of the magwells. This style and the next both work with factory magazine base plates as well as Magpul and ETS mag base plates. This version is the same as the carry magwell, but the back is not cut at an angle. This gives a little bit more real estate for your hand, especially on the compact frame. I call it the full funnel carry magwell. This is the magwell design I started with for the Polymer 80 frames. I didn't really see any competition style magwells out there specific to the Polymer 80 frames, and I wanted to build a competition or race style P80 setup. Uh, this one does require the use of different mag base plates. I wanted to add weight to the frame. Lots of competition style magwells have weight inserts to help control the gun. I purchased some of these quarter ounce 
tungsten fishing weights uh, off of Amazon and designed this version of the original competition magwell to hold four of these weights. That was kind of a packaging nightmare, but I pulled it off. So this weighs about 1.5 ounces. And um, you can see it here on the gun. It has a really, really uh, good fit around the opening for the magazine. Uh, there's no ledges for it to hang up on. And this magwell was specifically designed to clear the strike industry uh, extended mag base plates. Um, and this one is uh, printed out of PLA that was mixed together to match the color of the frame. And as you can see, it's holding up pretty well despite quite a bit of uh, use. To add more weight low down on the pistol frame, I designed this insert for the back strap that holds six more of the quarter ounce weights for 1.5 more ounces of weight in the pistol frame. The insert for the compact frame back strap only holds four weights. I also 3D printed a solid version of this without the holes for the weights and used it to sand cast my own metal weights out of bismuth these ended up being around one ounce heavier than the tungsten weight version the back strap inserts have to be used with the magwells uh, any of the magwells will work but the back strap insert sits on top of the magwell they may rattle a little they did in my guns uh, and that's just due to uh, tolerance variation in the frames themselves uh, and making sure they'll fit so just uh, i just stuck a thin little piece of foam in there uh, to to mitigate that rattling Next up is HKP30 Magwell. I got lots of requests for this one on the video I posted on this firearm. I recommend printing it out of PETG. It has some thin uh, features that need to be able to flex a little bit to conform to the grip. No hardware needed. It just secures on the front of the grip and then the roll pin for the back strap holds it in in the rear. This does work with factory magazine base pads, um, but you do lose your ability to strip the magazines out like this if you have this magwell on there. I did buy and test out the HK parts magwell for this gun that is machined from aluminum and the fit was so hilariously bad I designed my own out of spite. Um, this thing's held up well. I've been running it for hundreds of rounds. Uh, this will fit the P30 and the P30L. It will work with any of the side plates and any of the back strap sizes, although the profile of the piece where it attaches to the grip is meant to match the medium size back strap. So of course this is the trigger pack pulled out of my CZ Scorpion. Um, I designed my own flat trigger. It has uh, extra material on the back here to prevent over travel. Um, this thing is sweet, it's held up well over hundreds of rounds. I recommend printing it out of PETG with 100% infill due to the forces it sees. Um, of course, mine may be holding up better than it would in a factory Scorpion because I have the HBI um, reduced power uh, trigger spring kit in here, which I highly recommend uh, for any Scorpion if you intend on keeping the factory internals and not going to like a Timney unit. Um, now, this is my own design for a safety selector. Uh, I tried a couple of aftermarket ones. There's two options from HBI that I tried in the Magpul ones. Didn't really like any of them, so I designed my own. This is a separate insert that is to be printed from a different color and glued in to act as an indicator. Or if you don't want to print this, you could just drop some paint down in the little groove for it. This one is only for the left side as I am right-handed and I actuate it with my thumb. But of course, you could take the step file, put it into some CAD software, mirror it, and then um, you're ready to go to stick it on the right side if you are a lefty. There wasn't a lot of options for Streamlight specific pressure pad mounts out there, so I designed my own. This one is specific to the Streamlight pressure pads that have the momentary and constant on button. I run this on my Scorpion with a uh, TLR rail mount one. It's been working great. Again, recommend PETG for strength and 100% infill. The M-Lock pattern is slightly offset and only two holes need to be used. Uh, for mounting and this allows for versatility and mounting positions so you can get it positioned exactly where you want it on your M-Lock rail. I also wrote the torque spec on there because I like when companies do that. You obviously need to purchase M-Lock hardware for this to work. 
These are the magazine racks I designed. This one holds six AR-15 magazines or 12 double stack 9mm pistol magazines. This one holds five AR-10 magazines or five AK-47 magazines. It also holds 10 CZ Scorpion magazines, depending on the base plates they have on them. I have also come up with a uh, closet rod mount system that has adjustable screws for leveling them. And uh, depending on the height that the shelf is above the closet rod. These closet rod mounts use the same M5 heat set inserts and uh, flanged M5 bolts uh, that the magwells use. Um, the spacing of these mounting holes is on one inch centers so it can be used with like the, uh, the one inch pegboard grid uh, or fire some screws into a wood board or attach a magnet to the back of it, screw it into the side of your, 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 uh, your gun safe or, or whatever. They're pretty versatile. Um, and they've been holding up really well. I've had fully loaded magazines hanging on these things for months. Um, and that's only at like 25 or 15% infill if I remember correctly, PETG or PLA. Um, I also have published in the past a whole video on these that nobody watched. So if you're interested in more information on these, go check my, uh, video history on YouTube. That's all I got. Quick overview of my designs. This is, uh, all up on GrabCAD right now. I hope some of you, uh, download them, 3d print them and enjoy them, print them for your buddies, share them, uh, put them on your own guns. Let me know how they hold up. Uh, thanks for watching and being a part of this very small community that is my channel on YouTube.